It's to do an Excel time. Yeah. Mama, it's to do an Excel time. Back, it's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Irvin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 162, How Many Movies Are Showing at a Certain Time? Hey, Mike, this question uh, emailed in to me. I love movies, so I thought this one was really cool. Let's say you have the Megaplex down the street with you know 18 different screens, and those movies start at a certain time and end at a certain time based on how long the movie is. Ah, but the next movie doesn't start right away. There's like a 20-minute gap between one showing and the next showing in order to clean the theater and get people in and out. So the question is, uh, given the schedule over here, for any time period shown along this uh, uh, along the left hand side. So at 1145, how many of those theater, theaters are actually showing movies? In theory, you might get 18 theaters showing a movie all at the same time, but there's going to be a lots of times when there's less than 18 theaters because they're uh, in that 20 minute gap or they haven't started showing the first movie yet. Alright, so to do this, I'm going to build a helper column. I'm going to choose any number initially from the left hand side. And I'm going to build a formula here that says, is there a movie showing right now at 4.15? Two things have to be true. The first thing that has to be true is the start time has to be less than or equal to our, let's call it a hurdle time, F4. And then the other thing that has to be true is the end time has to be greater than or equal to that same time up in cell E1. Again, press F4 to put the dollar signs in. If both of those are true, then we have one movie showing. Otherwise, we have zero movie showing. Double click to shoot that down. And then right up here above my table, I'm going to do equal sum of all of those helper cells. And so at 415, we have 16 movies showing. At let's say 445, there's 15 movies showing. So one movie got out or something like that. All right, now, uh, you know, this number is only telling me the answer for one particular cell, but we can use the what if tools, uh, the data table. So I go to the data tab, what if analysis, data table. And normally we have a table with variables along the top and variables down the side, but in this case we only have variables down the side, so we're only going to use the column input cell. It says take all of these numbers from the column down the side and plug them in one at a time into cell E1, and then report what number we get from that formula. So we click OK, and bam, that fast uh, we have all of our results all the way down. So start out with uh, four movies showing at 11.45. 10 movies at 12.15, and so on, all right? And next week, when we get the new run times, we can fill in this calendar over here, the schedule over here, and these numbers will automatically update. Uh, yeah, so we can you know, possibly plan staffing or you know, electricity or something, right? You can see where this would be useful. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Oh, you gotta love the data table feature. And check this out. Up in the the formula bar, those are curly brackets, which means it's an array formula that's automatically created by the data table. I love it. All right, I'm gonna come over to this sheet here, and I'm gonna think of this column here as the lower end, and this as the upper end. And for each time, I have to say, are you time greater than or equal to the lower and less than or equal to the upper? I'm going to start off with count ifs. If you have 2007 or later, since as Mr. Excel pointed out, this is and criteria. That's what the count ifs and sum ifs do. They do and criteria. So for the criteria range, control shift down now, F4, comma, and then the criteria. Remember, I need to ask the question, are you time greater than or equal to? So in double quotes, greater than or equal to, the equal sign always comes after the greater than symbol. End double quote, and I have to join that using shift seven to our time. So the greater than is asking the question, hey, are you time greater than the lower end? Comma, criteria range two, this will be the upper end. Control shift down arrow, F4, comma, and now I have to ask the question, are you less than, less than or equal to, and double quote join this time right here. Notice the less than is pointing towards there. Close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. So that will give us our counts for each time. Now, if you don't have 2007, you need to go out and get 2013. That's what you need to do. But in that case, there's no count if, so you'd have to use some product. Now, we're going to take 
those two arrays and multiply. Remember, we have this column and this column here. Ah, we're going to have to use double negative, because we're going to get a column of, true, of trues and falses. And really, some product can't understand trues and falses, so we're going to need to convert them to ones and zeros with that double negative. And now I'm going to ask the question, Control-Shift-Down or F4, are any of you less than or equal to this time right here? close parentheses. If I highlight broop, this right here, that's the inside piece, and hit the F9 key to evaluate, we get our trues and falses, right? But some product can't understand them. Control Z. Now with the double negatives, that'll convert those to F9, ones and zeros. Control Z. Now we do the same thing. We have the first array, and we need to multiply by a second array of trues and falses. So we got our double negative open parentheses. Column, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. And I'm going to ask the question, are any of you greater than or equal to this time right here? Notice like in our last one, the greater than symbol is pointing towards the time for the lower end. And the smaller end of the symbol is pointing towards our time for the upper end. Close parentheses. The, array, the sum product, boop, right there, array times array, and it will give us our count. Only when it sees 1 times 1 will sum product then add. Double click and send it down. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike, that is awesome. Two different approaches. I've always heard that the plural, count ifs, is a lot faster than sum product. I don't know that we have enough uh, data points here to actually test it out. But let's see. Charles Williams here. Now let's see how those solutions stack up using Fast Excel. All right, so yeah, we're going to use Charles Williams Fast Excel. First thing we do is turn the calculation options to manual. And let's come back and first try the data table. I know that the data table is horribly, horribly slow. So we select this range here and Fast Excel V3. We will calc the range 0 0.2, 0 0.201 milliseconds. We'll try a few different uh, try. 0.1 and 0.093, so less than 0.2. Uh, let's try these two, though. The count ifs, the new fast way to go. Calc range, 0.945. Calc range, 1.483. And calc range, 2.262. What's up with that? It's getting slower every time. And then some product, the old, old way, which is allegedly a lot slower than count ifs. Calc range 1.346, calc range 1.309, and 1.374. So actually, some product is consistently coming out uh, uh, faster than count ifs. Isn't that crazy? I like all three methods, though. Um, they uh, really seem to be about equivalent in calculation speed, um, and uh, uh, for this small data set, anyway. Uh, interesting problem. The person who asked me this question has been asking for a couple weeks, so hopefully uh, one of these three will solve their problem. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun. It's Dueling Excel time.